good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go ahead. Good, yeah. So thanks very much, and thanks to the uh, organizers for uh, for inviting me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Very nice workshop. And I realized that the the title of it is uh, topological materials and beyond. And um, I think we heard a lot about uh, topological materials so far. So I thought I might try and um, see what can be done in the beyond category. This talk is really, as the last talk in the, in the workshop, meant to emphasize that, uh, that there's this uh, delightfully nondescript notion of beyond. Um, all right, so I'll talk about many buddy band inversions. And uh, the case that I want to make is uh, that there uh, is a special class of uh, band inversions for which you would expect interactions to be, uh, to be important. And, um, uh, and these provide a, an interesting uh, uh, new venue for uh, strongly correlated uh, electrons to exhibit um, uh, unconventional and uh, new, possibly exotic, um, uh, uh, versions of, of, of collective behavior. And so this is um, in part motivated uh, by the fact that um, the notion of band inversions um, have, has been very powerful in, in our understanding of uh, of topological phases, in particular uh, free fermion topological phases. Um, and um, uh, at the same time, it's also given a very useful prescription to, uh, to look for materials that, that might realize topological phases. And so um, you know, we were motivated in part by the question, does there exist some notion of a, of a many-body generalization of, uh, of this band inversion transition? And so what we realized and what I'll uh, try to argue is that this requires a special class of band inversions, uh, which we call higher angular momentum band inversions, um, for which uh, interactions are uh, expected to determine the fate of, uh, of the transition. And so in this talk, I'll, uh, I'll basically introduce that. And, um, and I'll also discuss some, uh, some lattice models that, that would realize these higher angular momentum band inversions. Um, which might then point to at least some roots of possible uh, realizations. And um, in addition to um, introducing a, uh, a wave function for uh, an exotic <laughs> phase that you might expect at these higher angular momentum band inversions, I'll also talk a little bit about some, uh, uh, some mean field theory results um, of, uh, of interactions in, um, in these systems. So this is work done um, at, while I was still at Penn with uh, Yishen uh, Hu and, and Charles Kane. And um, these are the, the references, so hence the pen is meant to indicate that, that most of the work was the, pretty much all the work was done there so far. Um, okay, so let me start by, um, uh, by just beginning with, uh, with the notion of a band inversion and uh, take the simplest case, which is uh, the transition to a turn insulator in, in two dimensions. So that involves two non degenerate bands. And so here on the left side would be the, the uninverted case, and uh, on the right side here, this is, this is good. On the right side here is the uh, is the inverted uh, case, and that would uh, realize the um, uh, the turn insulating phase. And so you can you can parametrize this band inversion by a, a mass or a band inversion parameter, which I here call delta. So when delta is positive, delta just measures the energy difference between the bands of these two states. And if it's positive, it's uh, it's and you fill the uh, this band completely. You just have a real band insulator. And uh, here um, uh, delta has switched sign and that um, uh, describes the turn insulator. Uh, when delta is zero, you're right at the transition, and uh, then the system is gapless, and this gapless point um, is, as we perhaps know very well, um, uh, described by a Dirac fermion with, uh, with linear dispersion. So that implies that this is an example of an angular momentum one uh, band inversion. And it furthermore implies that uh, the density of states right at the transition vanishes. Um, in contrast, higher angular momentum band inversions um, uh, are band inversions uh, between bands which have relative uh, angular momentum larger than one, where L um, uh, labels the angular momentum. So in that case, the situation is very similar. Um, so you have the uninverted case here, which describes the trivial phase, and uh, uh, here is the topological phase. And in this case, the transition, the, the, the band inversion describes the transition between the trivial phase and a phase with higher churn number. So that's, that's on the right side. But now in this case, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the critical point right at the transition is also gapless, but uh, the dispersion is, uh, is not linear, but quadratic. And uh, that implies that uh, the density of states is, uh, is non-vanishing. So then you would expect, perhaps, that um, uh, right at the transition, interactions would, uh, uh, would do something to it. And so here, I want to um, 
uh, proposed such type of band inversions as, as a venue for, uh, uh, for, uh, for correlated physics and um, uh, more broadly um, proposed that it might be a, a, a new paradigm for studying um, uh, interacting phases, and in particular topological interacting phases, uh, beyond the flat band paradigm, which uh, in the next slide I'll argue is sort of the opposite limit of, uh, of the band inversion paradigm. So in particular, I'll, I'll talk about uh, two, uh, two possibilities for correlated behavior. One, one exotic, um, which is a fractionalized correlated fluid of electrons and holes. And um, uh, I would argue that, that this, this state is, is akin to a Laughlin state. And uh, the essence of our proposal is a uh, many-body wave function that, um, that should describe um, uh, this phase. And what would be interesting about it is that this is a, um, uh, a Laughlin state, meaning a fractional total hull state at zero magnetic field, uh, and, um, and perhaps more, uh, more importantly, that, uh, that it would happen at, uh, at stoichiometric band filling, uh, because you're, you're, you're doing this in the context of a, of a band inversion rather than a, um, a, a fractionally uh, filled band. So the, this, this, this first thing uh, has been famously um, uh, shown that that, uh, that magnetic field is not actually um, Requirements, but perhaps this might also um, help you uh, with that uh, complication. And the second thing that I'll, I'll talk about is just uh, a more mundane or less exotic uh, symmetry breaking transition, um, uh, and that involves a pairing of electrons and holes, so you might uh, call this exotonic pairing, um, which form a, a common state. And that, the symmetry that is broken is rotation symmetry, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll discuss this. So, um, uh, as I said, one of the um, um, the main things that I'd like to uh, showcase is that, um, in particular, this type of physics can come out of a paradigm that is very different from, uh, uh, from the paradigm that we're used to in, uh, in describing strongly correlated uh, topological phases, and that is um, uh, the flat band paradigm. And the canonical example of that is the case of Landau levels uh, and, and the quantum Hall effect, so in a two-dimensional electron gas in a, in a perpendicular magnetic field. Uh, the energy levels reorganize into, into these flat Landau levels. And um, because of the, the structure of these Landau levels, um, it, uh, it's possible, um, famously proposed by Laughlin, to, to write down a, a many-body wave function for, um, uh, uh, for the fractional, fractional quantum Hall state that uh, has been observed at, at fractional filling of uh, one of these Landau levels. And the physical consequence of that is this um, uh, quantization of the Hall conductance in fractions of E squared over H. And so, because of this, 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 uh, this special structure of this Alana level spectrum and, uh, and the states of Alana level, um, uh, uh, you, can, you can make progress with, uh, with these many-body wave functions in, the, uh, in, this, in this way, where here, uh, just to, to set the stage for what is to come, where the uh, Zi and Zj are complex coordinates of the, of the particles, I and J uh, label the particles, and um, uh, and m here is this uh, is this exponent, which is uh, uh, one, three, or five, which are these um, uh, Laughlin series, and um, and as such, it's become a, a, a sort of flat band paradigm for uh, for strongly correlated topological phases. And uh, what I would like to do is is sort of um, propose that uh, that similar things can happen um, uh, in um, in the band inversion paradigm. So let me let me move to that again and um, begin by um, uh, by first um, uh, considering um, uh, the simple case um, of uh, the transition to just a churn insulator. And in order to um, to do that, what I'll uh, find convenient is to um, to uh, to rephrase this problem in terms of electrons and holes. So um, uh, what I will do is um, uh, I'll say that um, uh, the uh, Creation of a hole is, is equal to annihilating a state in the in the valence band, and um, and, uh, and so those are holes and electrons. That is just uh, you know creating a state uh, in, the, in the conduction band is just um, um, uh, you know creating an electron. So in in doing this transformation, that means that the coupling between the bands to, uh, takes takes this form uh, in terms of electron and hole pairs. And um, uh, this function delta of k here now um, describes the structure of this coupling. And so, um, you know, you might call, you know, you might call this some type of, um, you know, since you're pairing electron like holes, you might think of, 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 of this delta describing some form of exotonic pairing. But it should be emphasized here that um, 
uh, this delta does not reflect a, uh, a symmetry breaking, so this, is, this, this term is present, uh, um, uh, present in the Hamiltonian, so one should be a little bit careful with, uh, with, with really calling it um, um, a, a, a pairing. Um, so with, uh, with that, um, uh, let me then call, uh, describe Hamiltonian for, uh, for, for these type of band inversions. And so um, I'll actually move here for a second so that I can see the slides. Um, so the Hamiltonian takes this, this, uh, this two by two form because we're talking about two, two non-degenerate bands. And so on the diagonal is, uh, um, uh, is, is just the dispersion, the quadratic dispersion of the bands and the, the band inversion parameter which uh, measures this, the, the difference between the bands. And, um, and on the off-diagonal is the, is the coupling between the bands. And this off-diagonal coupling uh, takes the form uh, uh, written here, where an L uh, um, labels the, uh, the, the angular momentum. So this is um, uh, why, uh, where, the, where the name higher angular momentum band inversion uh, comes from. And so uh, let me begin by, uh, by first considering um, uh, the case L equals 1. So that is a model for transition to a turn insulator. And what I would like to do is get to a, to a wave function. So in order to do that, you can invoke um, uh, the work done by Reed and Green, um, where they formulated a, a ground state wave function for, uh, for this in terms of a, um, uh, in their case, for a people's IP superconductor, for, a, 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 you know, for, for, this, for this case here, uh, in terms of a BCS uh, wave function. So then, you, know, you just obtain this 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 BCS form, where now this GFK um, uh, encodes the the angular momentum. So in, in, in the case of L equals one, it sort of describes this P plus IP um, excitonic type pairing of uh, of electron and hole pairs. So uh, going to uh, to real space, so if we are transforming, we would like to have a, a wave function in terms of the coordinates of the particles and the holes. So I'm going to uh, work towards a wave function for n electrons at position zi, where zi, again, are the complex coordinates, and n holes at wj, and w are the um, complex coordinates of the holes. So in the topological, uh, in the band inverted case, um, uh, this the Fourier transform of, of k is given by g of z, where, which is uh, 1 over z. And it's actually possible to, uh, to write down a, a model, or a Hamiltonian, so in the previous slide, such that um, uh, at a particular point of this model, this is, this is exact. And so then um, uh, you can proceed by just uh, working out what, uh, what that wave function should be by taking um, uh, you know, the many body wave function as the determinant uh, uh, of, um, of this uh, G of Zi minus Wj. And if you use this, then what you obtain is, um, uh, is this form here shown on the right-hand side. Um, so, uh, that already uh, shows you that it's that it's a little bit similar to uh, to what I've shown before. So it's uh, you know, the coordinates of the of the particles of the holes here and their and their difference. And here is um, uh, the coordinates of the uh, particles and the coordinates of the holes. And so the way in which one might think about that is uh, you know an angular momentum one uh, pairing of electrons and holes. And so that's why they're in the uh, in the denominator here. So that is that you can establish really exactly in, in a, for a particular um, uh, a free fermion model um, uh, for the case L equals one, and so I want to take that and um, uh, consider a wave function for a um, uh, for the case where L is uh, is, is three or other odd uh, odd numbers, and so to, to do that uh, I'll, I'll um, contrast again these these two different paradigms, so the flat band paradigm where we have electrons in the magnetic field, so the, the Landau level problem. And, um, and the band inversion uh, paradigm where you have electrons and holes. And so uh, in case of the, um, the new equals one state, then this would be the, um, uh, you know, the well-known wave function for um, the Bill Landau level. And um, here you would, you would notice first that the, uh, the, uh, you know, the particles are in a um, relative angular momentum one state. And in th this wave function here, um, w uh, which describes the, um, uh, the churn insulator, uh, you would note that in, in the denominator here, the uh, electrons and holes kind of are in a you know, ang relative angular momentum one um, um, paired phase. And so um, you might think, well, let, let me then take this, uh, this wave function here, where m is, is you know, three or, or any other uh, number, um, and, and generalize that. And just um, uh, similarly here, you know, take the power to the, uh, to the angular momentum L. 
And so this, is, uh, this then constitutes a proposal, uh, an idea, that uh, a wave function of this form uh, might describe a, um, a strongly correlated phase, which uh, is akin and has, has um, the same, same phenomenological properties as, uh, as a state described by, uh, by this wave function here. And um, the name we gave that then is the fractional excitonic uh, insulator. And um, so I'll, I'll I'll, I want to talk about this wave function a little bit more uh, because um, here it's just presented as a proposal, uh, which it is. But there are a number of, uh, of pieces of evidence that we um, that we've thought about that might um, that might give confidence that that, that such a state is. Question. Uh, so yeah. without the uh, Gaussian factor, the wave function is uh, normalizable or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So because in in, in the in the um, uh, L equals one case, you know, it just came out of um, uh, you know, the starting point was was a wave function that was normalized, and then you just pull it out of that. <laughs> um, but I, you know, you make a good point that, that the difference between these two was, of course, the, the fact that the magnetic field is absent, so the Gaussian factor is um, uh, is absent in the, uh, in the band inversion case. Um, and so there's there's um, uh, 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 there's three things that I just want to mention here, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the, the third one here. So um, what's been very powerful in the in the case of uh, the Laughlin wave function and, and the quantum Hall effect is, uh, is a plasma analogy, where you interpret um, uh, the wave function squared as uh, as the partition function of the plasma, and um, one can do something similar here, um, uh, where um, where you essentially recover um, the cost of the stylus problem of um, uh, of Mortises and, and anti mortises, which here um, then become the particles and holes, and show that there's a, a plasma screening phase, uh, which then you know gives confidence that um, uh, perhaps there is a um, uh, um, an incompressible fractional quantum Hall state um, uh, described by that wave function. And another um, uh, move we explored was the um, was a, is a composite fermion model, where you um, um, go to different uh, degrees of freedom, the composite fermions, uh, meaning the composite electrons and composite holes, and um, uh, by flux attachment, and um, consider a, um, uh, a mean field state for, uh, for the composite fermions. And um, in that case, one can, sh one can show that the, um, uh, the response, meaning the, um, uh, the, the Hall conductance, is also uh, um, quantized in fractions of uh, p squared over h. And the third one is is, um, uh, is the idea that you might try to um, uh, derive uh, a Hamiltonian for which um, the the wave function you propose is is an exact ground state. So that's you know the idea behind that is sort of seeking uh, uh, an exact question uh, to the answer, where the answer is the wave function, and you're trying to find the exact question, which is the, which is the Hamiltonian, which is also you know that that's also uh, lifted from ideas um, that have proven very uh, very powerful in um, uh, in quantum Hall physics, and so um, uh, the idea here uh, is that um, you know you st uh, I'll go here again uh, that the starting point is to um, uh, to seek an operator uh, which here is called uh, Q for you know you do this for both electrons and the holes such that this operator annihilates the wave function. And so it ends up having this form, um, and then um, if uh, if you if you find that, then, then the wave function is a ground state of um, uh, of this Hamiltonian. Now, so the, the form is pretty complicated, and so is this uh, this Hamiltonian. But there's uh, there's two things I want to note. Uh, one is that uh, the Hamiltonian we, you derive based on um, the general many-body wave function. If you choose L equals one. Um, then you exactly recover the Hamiltonian um, for, for the, of the non-interacting problem that I sort of uh, started with, um, uh, and that describes the transition to a, uh, to a churn insulator. Uh, for L equals larger than one, um, the Hamiltonian involves uh, many body interactions, so, uh, so it becomes very complicated. Um, but there's one thing uh, that's, uh, and that's why I, I want to talk a little bit about this, this the exact Hamiltonian that's, that's interesting about this, um, because what you can do is you can take that Hamiltonian, uh, which, can, which has this, um, uh, these uh, very many body interactions, um, and you can switch off the interactions, and then ask the question, what Hamiltonian do you get? And it turns out that you get the following Hamiltonian uh, for the electrons and, uh, and the whole degrees of freedom, 
where epsilon of k now is just k squared. So that's similar to what we had before, except that delta is exactly equal to zero. And uh, um, uh, the coupling between the electron and hole degrees of freedom is given precisely by this, uh, by this hang higher angular momentum form. So um, that inspires confidence that these higher angular momentum band inversions are indeed a, a promising uh, venue to, uh, uh, to look for this. And uh, you know, the idea that we have is that um, uh, if you take such a Hamiltonian and introduce some um, you know, uh, physically sensible interactions, that, um, uh, that you may still recover um, uh, the um, uh, a ground state that is described by, uh, by the wave function. And so um, uh, since, since this, this coming from this, this exact Hamiltonian shows that um, uh, higher angular momentum band inversions play, play an important role, okay, I'll, uh, I'll speed up a little bit then, play an important role, um, uh, I want to uh, ask the question, where, where might one find these higher angular momentum band inversions? How can we realize these uh, materials might have that? And in order to do that, I'll, um, I want to ask the question, what, uh, what Hamiltonian, um, you know, uh, non-interacting Hamiltonian, um, has these higher angular momentum band inversions, and in what case are they, are they protected? Okay, you know, is this a protected feature of, uh, of the system? And so then you look at the, at the symmetries and the symmetry quantum numbers, and uh, in particular, you have to um, look at what are the symmetries of an angular momentum, because we're talking about uh, an angular momentum here. So it's certainly um, you know, odd under, under mirror reflection, but it's, uh, it's invariant under rotations. And actually, rotations turn out to be very important, because rotations um, are the symmetries that allow us to distinguish angular momentum. And um, in a lattice, uh, we only have n-fold uh, rotations, where n is up to 6. And so if we want to distinguish um, uh, angular momenta, then uh, we realize that um, you know, six-fold symmetry is, um, uh, is ideal, because that's the maximum uh, rotation symmetry that, uh, that you can get. So uh, in the rest, I'll, uh, in the models that I'll, that I'll describe, I'll focus on, um, uh, on, on six-fold rotation uh, symmetric systems. And so another thing you need is that, um, in order to have this higher angular momentum band inversion, that this band inversion is between bands that have the right relative angular momentum quantum numbers. So there's three basic ways in which one can, one can do this. One is to uh, consider cases where um, the bands are described by different um, you know, atomic orbitals, have character of different atomic orbitals. Or perhaps in, in spin over coupled systems, you can think of uh, spin, where you know, spin three half and spin minus three half band, they also have a relative angular momentum three. Um, if they invert, that would, that would lead to the, same, uh, um, uh, to the same system. And a third um, uh, case, which is, you know, um, uh, which is kind of uh, important also to mention, is that um, this can come from uh, from structure in the in the unit cell? So here, um, in this you know um, uh, in this simple um, structure here, you can form um, uh, states that are um, bonding and anti-bonding states of the, the, the two sites, and um, uh, one will will transform as an S-wave state, and another will transform as an F-wave state. And I'll, I'll I'll talk about a model um, that uh, that does this. And so based on these sort of ideas, we introduced uh, uh, different classes of model Hamiltonians that at least give some um, idea of where to look for, uh, for realizing these types of band inversions in materials. So I'll discuss uh, two, uh, just to give you um, an idea. So one is a model on a triangular lattice with S and F wave orbitals. Um, so on each side, you have an S and an F wave state. And then they couple uh, to each other um, by, uh, by these F wave harmonics. So this is a, a picture of how uh, how you couple the states, so this is parameters of the type binding model. And what you see from this is if you, you, know, you go around, then this has the, uh, the symmetry of an angular momentum 3. Um, another uh, example is, is a honeycomb lattice model also, um, as Islam um, noted this morning, you know, already has the six, C6 symmetry. And in that case, um, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, most of, uh, of you will, will probably know this, you know, that, that you can, um, um, with the Haldane prescription, um, uh, realize a, a churn insulator, but if you uh, also introduce a third nearest neighbor coupling, so this, this T prime here that goes across the hexagons, then what you're able to do is, at gamma, engineer a band inversion between uh, states that have effective S wave character and effective F wave character. So uh, with this additional parameter, even the Haldane model can realize uh, an angular momentum 3 band inversion. And so the spectrum of that um, uh, Looks uh, looks very simple, just like this. It's uh, it's pretty easy. And here I show the um, 
the inverted case where um, there's a small uh, small gap here, and it's it's pretty small because the because the coupling is cubic, so um, that makes this gap um, uh, small. But so with the, with these models, you know, it's uh, first of all it, it gives it gives some idea of where to look for for materials. At, at the same time, uh, you may use them to uh, to numerically test some of the, the ideas that we um, uh, uh, we put out here. Uh, so how much time do I have? Zero. Zero. Okay. So then, um, I guess. Well, I had some some some, some stuff on on, on on mean field theory, but um, I'll just um, leave it at that then and put up the uh, some concluding remarks. And uh, thank you. <coughs>
Um, the answer is yeah, that might that might yeah. similarly be very interesting to look at. Uh, as far as you know, uh, strongly interacting stuff is concerned, I don't know yet. Yeah, yeah that, it's, it's a good thing to. Yeah. All right, then that's it. That's first possession. Thank you and all the other speakers again.